in this masterclass, I'm going to focus on the principal component analysis. Um, so we get an intuitive understanding of what we do when we do this type of analysis. And the analysis is similar to exploratory factor analysis. I'm not going to explain exploratory factor analysis, but uh, the intu intuitions that we gain from principal component analysis should apply to exploratory factor analysis as well. In principal component analysis, what we are going to do is that we are going to start with a number of items. Um, here we have a representation of two items only, item one and item two, but it could be any number of items. And then we are going to reduce the data to, let's say we've got 30 items, we are going to reduce to a number of components. So instead of have dealing with 30 variables, one per item, we are going to try to find variables that are more related to each other. And with those variables, we are going to create a component. So with 30 variables, we may have um, we may end up with, depends on, on the case, three components or four components, five or six, seven, eight components. And that reduce the data from 30 to this number of components. And that's useful to, to combine these new um, components with other variables instead of using the 30 uh, um, variables. So I'm going to show the explanation of how we find a common, uh, a principal component when we have only two variables. And the same principle applies to any number of variables. Okay, so here we've got represented the responses to item one in um, in the x-axis and responses to item two in the y-axis. In this case is a a continuous variable, but it, it applies as well to to non-continuous, to discrete uh, numerical variables. Um, so we've got in the graph the mean of, of the item one and the mean of the item two. And the, the orange dots represent the observations, all the observations. And one dot is one participant and the location on the x-axis indicates the score obtained in item one and the location in the y-axis indicates the score obtained in item two. Now, how do we find the first principal component? And the first principal component is very similar to regression, but there is a slight difference. So we are going to obtain some line that, and that line is a line that reduces the, the distance between the, the orange dots and that line. So we can have many, many lines. Um, any line that we, are, we, we propose as, as principal component as the regression line has to pass through the intersection of the two of the two means of the mean of item one and the mean of item two, and well, we can rotate that a uh, that line for the principal component and find what's the best line, and the best line is the one that reduces that 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 if we start. Uh, um, measuring the distance between the dots and the line, it would be the line that reduces the total distance. Now this, there is a slight difference, but very important um, in respect to linear, linear regression. In linear regression, we are interested in the vertical difference. So how, what's the difference between the dot and vertically uh, with the prediction of the regression model? Here, in principal component analysis, the difference is perpendicular. So instead of, for example, this dot to the difference is the distance between this 
uh, the the dot and this uh, point in the line of the principal component but in in principal component analysis we do a perpendicular line so a, a line that goes perpendicular to the principal component line so that difference in this case or this difference in this case or this difference in this case so as opposed to this difference so the the lines are very similar but there is a slight difference we also calculate the slope but um, as we calculate in regression and in this case we can take any any value of x uh, and, and this calculation will work with any value but let's take the value of 50 here so basically in um for for x 50 uh, this arrow black arrow indicates that from 0 to 50 we have 50 points so and what we do is that in that value of 50 we uh, observe where is the uh, principal component and the principal component is around 28 in the for item 2 or y-axis so basically the slope we, in order to calculate the, the dimension of the slope we do the the increase in y as a function of increase in x so 28 divided by 50 that's 0 0.56 now if we do the, this at any at any uh, value of x or item 1 in this case it will generate the same at uh, the same outcome 0 0.56 we calculate we can calculate the, the length of this vector by using Pythagoras theorem so we know that we know the distance the, sorry the length of uh, the this side of this triangle we know the length of this side of the, the this um, this triangle so this is the hypotenuse of that triangle and we know that the square of the hypotenuse equals the, the sum of the the squares of the two sides and by a little bit of um, algebra then the the length of, of of the hypotenuse is the square root of the sum of the squares of the sides so that's what we have um, we've got square root uh, of 50 square plus 28 square and that is 57.3 so the length of this vector is 57.3 in this case now this value 57.3 it it's uh, it depends on the scale that we are using in this case goes from minus 50 to 50 but in other cases the the, the distribution is um, between a different range of values so this value 57.3 doesn't say much uh, it's not very informative so we are going to scale it to a vector of one so we are going to create a vector of length one so what uh, if the vector in order to create a vector of length one we are going to do it, what we are going to do is to uh, divide the three um, components of the triangle so we've got the hypotenuse is 57.3 and we are going to divide by the same value to obtain a number of one that's because we want to do that and then in order to to uh, get the uh, so the length of the sides uh, we got we do 50 divided by 57.3 and 28 divided by 57.3 and we get 0 0.87 in the first case and 0 0.49 in the second case the, the the vertical arrow is the the length is 0 0.49 and the horizontal arrow the length is 0 0.87 when we've got a hypotenuse of length one okay so now these values have a um a name so for the vector of length one 
uh, we call it eigenvector. Um, so that's a, a, a term that you're going to see a lot in factor analysis or in principal components analysis and it means this. And the other one that you're going to see even more is the concept of factor loading. So factor loading, um, the, the, this, the horizontal line, uh, which is uh, 0 0.87, that's the factor loading of item 1 in principal component 1. Why item 1? Well, because this is talks about the variability of the variability of, of item 1 is in the x-axis. So this arrow is in the x-axis. That's the factor loading of item 1 with respect to the principal component 1. And then this vertical is the factor loading of item 2 in the principal component 1. Why? item 2 well the item the variability of item 2 is on the y axis so this arrow uh, uh, is on the y axis and and that's the factor loading of item 2 now this is a sort of correlation between the variable and the principal component so if we uh, consider the principal component a new variable with some with values for each value of uh, of the other items, and we uh, we do a correlation between uh, any of the items and the principal component, we will get a similar result to the factor loading: 0 0.49 for item two and 0 0.87 for item one. So, in this case, item one is very is, is strongly correlated to the principal component 1 and item 2 is more weakly correlated but still have a, a decent correlation with 